the colon is colonized by trillions of bacteria. If we zoom into a section of the colon, we can find the colon cells. And on top of the cells, towards the lumen, is mucus. Bacteria reside on the mucus and within the lumen. These bacteria have many functions in our body, one of which is fermenting foods that have escaped digestion in the small intestine. Butyrate is an end product of intestinal bacterial fermentation of mainly non-digestible carbohydrates, such as resistant starch. So here we have resistant starch, which has reached the colon. Bacteria will ferment the resistant starch, and through cross-feeding with other bacteria, butyrate is produced. Butyrate is a 4-carbon short-chain fatty acid. Butyrate is absorbed by the colon cells and is the main source of energy for these colon cells. Therefore, there are lower concentrations of butyrate that enter the bloodstream compared to other short-chain fatty acids, such as acetate and propionate. There is increasing interest regarding the effects butyrate have on colon health. For example, studies have shown that it, butyrate prevents the development and progression of colon cancer. It should be pointed out, however, that the knowledge and hypothesis concerning the effects of butyrate are mainly based on in vitro cell systems and animal studies. More human studies are needed to support some of these findings. In this video, we will explore and discuss the effects of butyrate on colon health based on current literature. So here I'm drawing a section of the colon again with the blood vessel. Within the blood vessel, we can find red blood cells and immune cells, such as the neutrophil. The neutrophils play a key role in phagocytosis. Now, butyrate, as I mentioned, is produced through bacterial fermentation. The effects butyrate have on the colon in general include increasing mucus production, decreasing cell permeability, promoting tight junctions, and decreasing pH. These effects all improve the colonic defense barrier, leading to enhanced protection against luminal antigens. Of course, butyrate does more than this, according to literature. We will focus now in more detail on the effects butyrate have on four specific types of cells. A normal colon cell, an inflamed colon cell, a cancerous colon cell, and the neutrophil. Let us begin with the normal colon cell. So here is a colon plasma membrane, the outer membrane. And here is a nucleus which contains the DNA. The colon cell's plasma membrane, as well as on other cell, cell membranes, there are a variety of short-chain fatty acid receptors and transporters. Butyrate elicits its effects through the G-protein receptor 109A and G-protein receptor 41 and 43, which I have not drawn, and can be transported inside the cell through the monocarboxylate transporter 1, MCT1, and the sodium monocarboxylate transporter 1, SMCT1. MCT1 works as a co-transporter for hydrogen and butyrate. SMCT1 functions as a co-transporter for sodium and butyrate. Now, if there was a lot of butyrate being absorbed by the colon cell, this may result in a lot of sodium being absorbed thanks to the SMCT1 uh, transporter. And if a lot of sodium is absorbed, water tends to follow. And because of this property, butyrate is considered as an antidiarrheal agent. Now, butyrate is the preferred fuel in colon cells. Butyrate is used preferentially over glucose. Butyrate is oxidized in the colon cells to produce energy, maintaining colon cell integrity and health. Within cells, there is an enzyme called histone deacetylase, or HDAC. 
which what HDAC does is that it causes DNA to be less accessible to transcription factors and also affects other proteins by removing acetyl groups from them. And therefore, you can think of HDAC as an enzyme that suppresses genes and proteins. Butyrate has been shown to be an inhibitor of HDAC. Through this function, butyrate helps maintain colon homeostasis. Butyrate can also bind to, onto the G protein receptor 109A, which can cause activation or inhibition of certain transcription factors. And we'll look into this as, the video, as we move through the video. Finally, if butyrate is in an undissociated form, which is a lipid-soluble form, it can enter the cell by diffusion through the plasma membranes without receptors or, or transports. Now, apart from helping uh, in maintaining homeostasis in the colon, butyrate can exert direct anti-inflammatory effects. The colon cells are permanently in close association with trillions of microbes and their products. Therefore, the colon cells must have some form of response to this potential challenge. So, and this is inflammation. So here we have an inflamed colon cell. In an inflamed cell, there is activation of transcription factors that controls the expression of inflammatory cytokines and other proteins. One of these transcription factors is nuclear factor kappa B. Nuclear factor kappa B will stimulate the transcription of RNA that will produce inflammatory mediators and proteins, cytokines, that will then be released by the inflamed cell. These inflammatory proteins will promote the inflammatory response. Examples of these proteins and enzymes produced are COX-2, and prostaglandins. In an inflamed colon cell, HDAC may also be suppressing important genes that normally maintains colon cell function and health. Butyrate can enter the inflamed cell through the MCT1 and SMCT1. From here, butyrate can inhibit HDAC, histone deacetylase, because butyrate is a HDAC inhibitor. By inhibiting HDAC, there can be activation of certain genes, such as for glutathione S transferases or GSTs. GSTs will reduce oxidative stress associated with inflammation. Butyrate mainly reduces inflammation by inhibiting nuclear factor kappa B through the G protein receptor 109A, thus inhibiting the production of inflammatory protein. So that was the effect butyrate have on an inflamed colon cell. Let us move on. One of the proposed beneficial effects of butyrate on the human colon health is the effect butyrate has on colon carcinogenesis. Butyrate has shown to prevent and inhibit uh, colon carcinogenesis. So here I'm drawing a colon cancer cell. Before continuing on, it must be noted that once a colon cell becomes cancerous, the colon cancer cell seem to prefer glucose over butyrate as an energy source. Also, the effects of butyrate on an inflamed colon cell can apply for a colon cancer cell, such as butyrate's uh, inhibitory effect on nuclear factor kappa B. Now, within a colon cancer cell, there may be hypermethylation in the DNA. Specifically, an increase in methylation on promoter regions 
which are regions that initiate transcription. Methylation of genes can lead to silencing of important genes, genes that otherwise would control uh, cell, the cell cycle and apoptosis, for example. To add further to this, the expression of certain receptors on colon cancer cells, such as the receptors for butyrate, are reduced, are underexpressed. And this may be directly or indirectly associated with DNA hypermethylation, as well as an increase in histone methylation, thanks to the contribution of histone deacetylase. Now it should be noted that DNA methylation and histone methylation are two different things. Histone deacetylases also may be more active in colon cancer cells. Now colon cancer cells love to proliferate. At the same time, these cells require more and more energy and nutrients. In order to do so, there is an increase in HIF1, alpha, and VEGF, which are angiogenic factors that promote angiogenesis, the formation and maturation of blood vessels. Now, butyrate can enter the cell or activate the G protein uh, receptor 109A if the channels and receptors are expressed. By activating the G protein receptor 109A, butyrate can activate P53, independent of the histone deacetylase. P53 is a transcription factor that regulates the expression of the stress response gene and many anti-proliferative processes. So butyrate inhibits the development and proliferation of cancer cells because the activation of the P53 transcription factor will activate genes that encode for proteins such as P21. P21 acts as a stop signal for cell division. This is good because um, P21 will reduce cell proliferation, one of the hallmarks of cancer. Further, activated P53 can initiate apoptosis through activation of pro-apoptotic proteins. Now, butyrate within the cell can inhibit histone deacetylase, allowing access of certain transcription factors. Interestingly, cancer cells appear to be a lot more sensitive to histone deacetylase inhibitors such as butyrate. Inhibition of histone deacetylase, HDAC, can allow expression of genes that code for uh, glutathione S-transferases, for example, which will reduce oxidative damage. Finally, Butyrate can affect the immune system in many ways, but for now we will concentrate on the effects butyrate have on neutrophils. Now butyrate can act on the G protein receptor 43 and 41 on immune cells. By activating G protein receptor 43, butyrate has shown to have chemotactic properties, allowing more neutrophils to be recruited to the area of interest. By recruiting more immune cells to the area, for example, the neutrophils are able to remove unwanted substances or bacteria from the mucosal system. And this concludes the video on butyrate. The effects of butyrate are diverse and complex. New hypotheses and findings are mainly based on in vitro data and animal models. More emphasis should be placed on human in vivo studies to unravel the role of butyrate in human health and disease.